Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. In the previous video, we took a look at some soldering techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at some desoldering techniques. We're going to also take a look at a bunch of different desoldering tools, and you can make the decision which desoldering tool is the best for you. So let's get started. On the bench is a bunch of different desoldering tools. Throughout this video, I'm going to use each one of these different desoldering tools in different applications and on different technologies to give you a better idea of which particular tool might be best for you. Or you might even want to own multiples of these things. I have to say that no matter what, owning a roll of wick material really is kind of necessary because you'll find yourself using this in odd situations where these tools just won't fit. So sometimes you'll deal with a tight area having a roll of wick really is kind of a necessary thing. Now you don't need to have a huge roll like this. This is a pretty big roll. They come in some pretty small packages. So it's always good just to have a little bit kicking around. To give you an idea, I've had this stuff for a very long time. So you know, I use it just sporadically. Really handy for you know, desoldering surface mount stuff as well and cleaning pads. But I'll get into that here in the video. So what we're going to do first is take a look at each one of these tools just before we get started here and I'll show you how each one of them works and their quirks and cleaning them and all that kind of stuff. The first desoldering tool that we're going to look at is this Soldapult. And these things work very well. I've owned my fair share of these things. But they do have a bunch of quirks and one of them is is that you have to manually load this thing every time you want to use it and if you're going to desolder a, an IC with, say, 64 pins on it, there's a bit of fatigue involved because you're continually having to load it. And then you press the button with this on the trace and it inhales the solder and then to the next pin and so on and so forth. And anybody that's owned one of these things will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're going to be desoldering ICs or any kind of circuit board where you're going to be using this thing in kind of a repetitive motion, they do cause a little bit of fatigue. Now they are a great device and they self-clean. You can see at the end here, when I press this in, see how that kind of pops out of the end there? So it kind of self-cleans its own nozzle. You'll find that sometimes they do jam up depending on how much solder this thing sucks up. So if you're doing point to point work or something like that with this device here, you'll find that this thing is going to be sucking up larger chunks of solder and sometimes it balls up right on the end and it'll plug on the inside so you have to take it apart. So before you take the thing apart it's always a good idea to get rid of the tension there and they come apart really easy. You just give them kind of a half turn twist and they come apart and you can see that there's a seal inside here and this thing just goes up and down inside here so when you're charging the thing up you're pressing this thing down like so, you can see here, you're going to charge this thing up. So what that's happening is this thing is going to extend to the end of the tube here. This thing will be just inside the nozzle. And then when you hit the button, this thing quickly snaps back and creates suction and inhales the solder here. So it pulls the solder into this chamber that you see here. See down there through the bottom. And this thing eventually fills up or, you know, you get a bunch of solder in here. You, you wouldn't really fill this thing up, but you get a bunch of solder in here and you'll have to take it apart and clean it out. And you'll find that these things get sticky and you'll have to lube this seal up every now and then and take the thing apart and clean it out. So just kind of standard procedure with one of these things. So when they go back together, pretty simple, put together like this and just give it a turn and you're off and working again. So we'll use this here on a bunch of different technologies and I'll show you what I mean with this one here. This desoldering tool is the smaller version of the other one and there are a few pros and cons to owning this particular device. We'll talk about the pros here first. So one of the pros is it's a lot smaller you can hold the thing in one hand. You can charge the thing with one finger and activate it just like that. Now, depending on the strength of your thumb and what you're desoldering, again, there's going to be a little bit of fatigue with this after a while, especially if you're you know, working on a, a large circuit board and you have to remove lots of parts. Now, the other one that we just looked at, really, you have to use two hands or there's no way that you can charge this thing with your thumb, right? One of the things that I find myself doing, and a lot of people do as well, is in order to charge this thing, 
you hold this in your hand like so, you turn this around and you press this against your hip and push it in like so, and then you use it like so, back and forth, and you'll find yourself doing that a lot, especially if you're holding onto a circuit board or something, or you've got an, an iron in one hand and you're wanting to use this. So it just really depends on your application. But again, with this tool here, you know, you get quite a bit more suction, and I find that these things last quite a bit longer. Now, again, looking at this tool here, this tool here is an aluminum cylinder here, and it has the seals inside, just like the other one does. The only problem with this is, is this is a very hard plastic material, and in order to clean this thing up really well, you got to take the top off and take the bottom off so you can get in the cylinder here. And, you know, you clean it out really well, clean the seal off and put a bit of lubricant on it and you know, things good to go again. But you can only do that so many times because this hard plastic ends up wearing out. The threads wear off. And one time you'll find yourself doing this and the whole back end will shoot right out of it just because the threads wear out. So that's one of the really big cons of these things you'll go through quite a few of these things compared to one of the other ones just for that particular reason. In fact, I probably can't count how many of these things I've gone through in the past. So I've owned all of these tools in the past. Now I just stick to one and I'll talk about that here in just a moment. Actually, I stick to two. This device here on this end, if you take it apart here, this is aluminum and this is aluminum. So it really won't wear out all that fast if you just stick to taking this one little area off. But again, that stops you from cleaning the seal and lubricating it on the top. And it makes cleaning this chamber out quite a bit more difficult without taking both ends off. So if you were to just remove this one end and leave this alone, I imagine you'd get a little bit more life out of it. But again, you know, if you're not doing desoldering on, you know, a a large scale you just do it every once in a while you might find that this little one gets you by again you know a little bit easier to use since it's kind of a, a one-hand deal to charge whereas the other one if you're not used to it you're gonna find yourself doing this a lot you have to put your iron down to do that right and then you do your desoldering put your iron down again and recharge the device and things like that so that's the two desoldering tools, the kind of manual activation kind of desoldering tools. If you buy one of these things and you find that you're doing a lot of desoldering, I think you're going to very quickly find yourself moving up to this one here. If you're going to be doing desoldering on a larger scale, this is definitely the way to go. Now, to give you an example, if you were to start a business, electronic repair business or something like that, and you were to work on different items that have lots of faulty capacitors in it, one of those items being switch mode power supplies, I've worked on some switch mode power supplies that have 40 capacitors inside them. So think about charging this thing 80 times to replace all those capacitors push it, discharge, and sometimes it doesn't work the first time. You don't get all the solder, so you have to reapply solder again and try again with this particular device. So owning one of these things and doing large-scale desoldering gets old very fast. So this is the way to go. This is a motorized pump here, and everything is all done. The tip is heated, so what you do is you just put this on there and hit the button, and I'll show you the technique to using this device here and you know using it effectively now the downfall to having something like this of course is the higher price tag but again if you're going to be doing this as a business it would pay off very quick and if you're a hobbyist to the extreme you know they are kind of nice to own for that as well you don't ever have to use one of those other devices so in order to change the tip on this one with the unit cold here just put this on give it a twist this here loosens up and you can just take the tip off like this and change this to a different one now the reason that you're going to want to change your tips is because the little hole in here is different diameters so you can change these things to really suit whatever you're working on so say you're working on some small ICs you know you could use the 0.8 to 1 millimeter tip 
and if you're working on larger capacitors you could use a 1.3 or 1.6 millimeter tip and that works very well now in order to get this thing to go back on again you can see that this is almost has like a coarse spline on it or fluted however you want to call that so that fits into the end here and what happens is is it has to fall through you can see that one of the tricks to this thing is if it's not sitting in right say it's sitting like that okay and you try and push it onto the end here you could damage this you never want to force it you have to make sure that this thing is right out to the end now of course you never want to handle this when this is hot because this is screaming hot this thing is an element when it's on right so you have to be very very careful when you're changing tips you know i usually don't change tips until the unit's cold a lot of people change these things when they're hot i don't really suggest that in order to put this back together make sure that again that this tip is right you know fully out if it's not if it's say like this and you try and put this thing back on you can see that it's going to fight so you want to make sure that that tip is properly you know right to the end of the uh, the throw there put this thing on and just give it a twist like that and you're back in business again so the device is very effective it's cold right now i haven't warmed this thing up yet if you buy this thing in the kit it comes in a, in a case with this and kind of like a steel cylinder so that you can quickly put it back into its mobile case if you're wanting to have this thing on your bench i strongly suggest you get some form of a soldering iron holder i got this one here it's just an aftermarket one you can drop the tips into this little area down here see that right there and you can adjust it and this thing just sits in here like so so you can adjust the angle see that there you can just adjust the angle and it'll hold the thing up so just a, a large generic holder you can tighten this little threaded area up here this one right here so you can get the right angle on the thing and just have it sitting on your bench like so and when you need it you just pull the thing out use it put it back in the holder and it's ready to go next time now one of the things with these newer Heikos this is the Heiko FR 300 okay so one of the things with this is you'll notice that these tips get one out of here again are fluted whereas in the older machines this is the 802 that I have as well so I have two devices here this one here of course this is cold as well this one here has a, a different tip and this is also a little bit smaller diameter here so you'll find that this tip will not work in this particular desoldering tool just because this has got those little splines on it or whatever you want to call them so you can see that they are definitely different and you can see the diameter there is quite a bit different as well you can see that smaller whereas this is larger now i hear that this is interchangeable and let's try it out to see if it is so i'll put this on here like so put this on here i haven't tried this yet so it looks like they are backwards compatible so this will fit into this one here because there's no area for this to lock into so if you owned one of these tools here you could just pretty much purchase the newer style tips and you'd get away with it now for me i've got lots and lots of these older tips that are good so i'll just keep these ones for the newer machine here and i'll use these ones i also find that uh, the diameter on some of these older tips there's lots of these things around you can get some very large diameters and one of the nice things about these things too is when they finally do go away so these things are very very tough again like with the soldering iron you never want to use any of these things to pry or to bend up uh, it's tempting believe me when you have a lead folded over on a circuit board you kind of want to poke it into the tip and use it to pry it up very hard on these things and i've done that before so it's always good to heat it up bend the lead up and then go in and desolder it you know just to to extend the life of the tip here but the nice thing about these things here is actually i'll go grab this bag that i have here full of spare tips 
somewhere here. There it is. I'll just get these out of here. These are the new ones. These are some of the new replacement ones for this one here. I always have lots of spares on hand. Yes, it does get a little bit pricey to have, have spares as well. So these are the tips for the older machine here. And you can see which one is it. This one here. This one here wore out. So what I ended up doing is just grinding the end right off. And I use this for just extreme applications when you're desoldering some of the large bulk capacitors in the, uh, in the switch mode power supplies or whatever power supply here. And what I'll do is I will go grab one of those capacitors right now to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So we'll take one of these, for example. It takes a pretty large desoldering tool to remove these types of capacitors just because of you know the size of the pin. So taking one of these things here and cutting it down a worn out tip, you know, fits quite nicely there. And again, this is uh, for very brief use. Because this is worn out and this has gone through the plating material, this will wear out very fast if it's just left on this machine. So it's, it's a very quick use. You use this to you know, do the bulk capacitors, shut the unit off, and then change the tip. So you can see here, if I put this together, And these here only usually need to be finger tight. You really don't need to tighten them any tighter than that. You can see that you know, fits quite nicely. And it's uh, you know got a lot of area. You want to make sure that this is flat so it you know contacts the trace nice and flat and don't have any sharp edges so that you gouge traces. But anyways, one of the tricks, and you could do that with these as well when they wear out. You could take one of these things and modify the tip so that it's larger for you know doing some of the larger components. So that's the two devices here. So we know that this is kind of backwards compatible. So, you know, this is an older device. This still works very well. And uh, this particular machine, I modified it. Uh, it has a pretty slow pump. Had really good suction to begin with. But um, I had to, um, how would you say, hop it up, hop up the, uh, the pump a little bit. So uh, the pump goes probably twice to three times as fast right now. So uh, it has two con rods and two pistons that that move in and out in the uh, in the actual pump, the Heiko 470 base, and uh, I thought in the beginning that uh, I end up I might end up throwing a rod, but uh, it's held up pretty good and it's uh, got lots of suction. In fact, it has so much suction that if you use this on a continual basis, I think it actually cools this thing off, and uh, some of the solder gets uh, jammed up in here. So it has very good suction, so it makes nice clean. Uh, you know, makes a nice clean job. But anyways, I'll get into that here into the future here and I'll show you the drive I built for it. It's a, um, a variable frequency drive in order to speed the motor up. It's an AC induction motor in the pump. I pulled a circuit board out of my scrap bin here and what we're going to do is desolder three different components with three different desoldering tools. So you can see here, there's some large capacitors here. It's a double-sided circuit board. So this should be a good test for all three of the components. So the first component that we're going to start with is the solder pult. You want to make sure that it's charged. So press this down. There's nothing worse than getting all set up and then pressing that little yellow button and nothing happens. So the first one that we're wanting to desolder will be this one right here. Now you'll notice that when you use these solder pults, you have to put a little bit of down pressure on the soldering iron tip and on a glossy board like this, sometimes you'll leave a little bit of a mark beside the little trace or the plated through hole in this case. So not a big deal, but you want to make sure that if you're going to be pressing down, you're not pressing down on another trace. So you need to create a good seal so that you can vacuum the joint out properly. You also want to make sure that there's enough solder on there so that it will vacuum properly. If there isn't enough solder, you want to add some solder to desolder. A little bit of a technique there. So what I'll do is I'll get my iron ready here. I'll clean the tip off, add just a bit of solder here. And it's always good to add a bit of solder just because it makes thermal connection a little bit quicker. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is, is that you're gonna be dealing with a little bit of dwell time here. If you're not familiar with dwell time, I explained that in the previous video. Dwell time is the amount of time that the tip is on the circuit board or on the trace or plated through hole. In this case, it'll be a plated through hole. 
So you want to keep that as short as possible, but yet you want to heat the joint up and allow the basically the heat to melt the solder on both sides of the board because this is a double-sided circuit board. So let's give this a shot and see what will happen. You can see it's just about melted there and it's loose. So now I want to give it some vacuum and looks like it didn't do too bad of a job. See on this side here, looks like it cleared it out okay. So we'll try it on the other side. So that should be right about here. So I'll add just a little bit more solder to the end of my iron here. Recharge the pump. So you got to press this back down again. Don't forget to do that. And over here we go. We want to let it melt through the board and and we'll see how that one went. Yeah, Might have went okay. So now you got to be careful with this that you don't go breaking the plated through holes. You want to rock this back and forth to see if it's loose. This side here seems to be pretty good. But this side here it seems that it might still be grabbing on that portion of the plated through hole. So what you want to do is you can just heat this. As long as you're careful, don't put too much pressure on it with your soldering iron tip. Just move it over just a little bit. So basically heat it up and give it a bit of a push like so. And a lot of the times that helps out a lot. So we'll see here. Yeah, that's pretty much freed up. Yeah, see that one's just coming straight out. Just want to be very careful there. That one's out. And this one here, bend this over just a little bit. And it's just about trying to come out. It might be that the end of this from being cut, sometimes from being cut, you can see that there, from being cut, they don't want to come out because the cutter actually almost flattens the top. And you can see it's stopping there. So that is actually the problem. It's not solder is completely gone. It's just because Basically, it's been cut by a dull cutter is really what's happening. So I'll grab another cutter here and I'll just trim that top area off with a sharp cutter. Whenever you do this, you want to wear eye protection. That's a nice sharp cutter. So that should, look at that, just falls right out. So if you have a dull cutter, there's another little hint for you. You want some nice sharp ones. So it didn't work too bad. So that is the first desoldering tool. That is the solder pult. Okay, next up, the smaller blue one. Let's give this one a shot. So it looks like there's quite a bit of solder on that joint there. So I added just a little bit to the other one. So you know what? I'm going to add just a little bit to this one just to make it a little bit easier on the smaller one. There we go. Okay, here we go. Pump is charged. Let's press down. And... One. And let's try this one here. And... Two. All right, let's see how that did. Well, looks like it might have done okay. Again, still a little bit stuck on the sides there. So I'll give this one just a bit of a push with this. And it feels like it's still pretty solid. So definitely not the vacuuming power of the big one, that's for sure. You can see there's still quite a bit of solder on that one. It actually just resealed it. So we'll heat this up and try one more time. And we'll try this one here one more time again. See if that did the job. Well, it's a little bit loose. This one side here might be okay. I think it's, uh, you know, risking pulling a plated through hole at this point. Not only that. 
This is probably cut by those dull cutters as well. I'll just heat this up a little bit. Give it a bit of a pull. I'll heat this plated through hole up. And I'm just helping it through on this side just by giving it a bit of a tug. So technically for this one, this one here, let's see. Wiggle this. Eh, it might try to come through. That one feels pretty loose. Again, I think this is more of an issue with the with that cutter. So I'll just cut this end off here. And it should maybe just come out now. So, yeah, I needed some help. Definitely not the vacuuming power of the other one. So now, next, we'll try the Heiko on this one right here. All right, let's try the Heiko. So I'm not even gonna give this one any kind of help. I won't even add any solder to this to make it any easier. We'll just make this about as hard as it can be for this. A little bit of solder on the joint. I have the 1.6 millimeter tip on here. There's one. And we'll go over here to this other one. And there we go. You can see that this one just basically wants to fall out of the board, but oh, it actually did. This one was cut a little bit better. So you can see that much easier, much easier with that device. Now this is the 1.6 millimeter tip on this one. I could probably get away with a 1.3. And as you can see, this is a shiny board and it's leaving just a little bit of a mark. You're very, very sensitive board. So that's just the way it is. And this is a, a brand new tip as well. And since we're here, we may as well take the last one out as well. So this looks like it right here. Here. And on the bottom is right here. Here's a tip for you if you have one of these powered vacuum desoldering units, whether it be a HACO or whatever you have. In order to make the components come out of the board easier, what you want to do is basically take the tip of your HACO. I'll just use this as an example. So picture this white tip as a heated tip. What you want to do is you want to put the tip over the component lead that's sticking out of the board and you want to heat it so that it melts to the other side of the board and then you want to run the tip around in a circular motion. So basically you're taking this little piece of wire here and you're moving it around a little bit. And that allows you to vacuum around the lead in the plated through hole. And that's why these other components just fall right out. I notice a lot of people, they just stick the heated tip on and hit the vacuum and then you know take the tip off. If you actually do a little bit of a circular motion there, you can kind of look at the solder rule as a plated through hole, right? This would be the circuit board here and this is either side. And if this, this is the lead sticking through, all right? So say this is the lead sticking through, you wanna put the tip over top of this and you wanna move this around in the plated through hole like this in a circular motion and that'll allow you to vacuum around that lead. And it'll help you to save a lot of plated through holes. So again, I'll give you an example here. So say we're, I can get this all in focus here. Say we're gonna vacuum this one. See, by doing that, you're allowing the vacuum to basically be pulled all the way around that pin. So this one here doesn't have much of a lead sticking out, but it's enough there. You can see that this component just wants to fall right out of the board, which it just did right over here. Using solder wick on a double-sided circuit board really doesn't work too incredibly effective. So it's basically for wicking up solder, basically the area that the wick itself is touching. So I've got a single-sided circuit board here and I'll show you how this works. Now solder wick alone works all right. If you add just a touch of flux to the solder wick, it pretty much just supercharges it. 
and makes this stuff work like crazy. So there's a capacitor on the other side of the board here. So what I'll do is I'll just put the solder wick on here like so. You got to remember that this dries the tip of your soldering iron out very quickly as well. So you need to add solder right after you do this. So you can see this here. You can see how quickly that worked. Pretty much pulled the solder right off that. And we'll go over here and advance it just a little bit more and you can see that it's pretty much free at this point I'll come on to this side just to make sure and now I'm going to add some solder to the tip of my iron here because it is bone dry one thing to always keep in mind when you do use solder wick so now what I'll do is over to the other side of the board here and grab this component which is this capacitor right here and it pretty much comes out there's a bit of glue on the bottom of it but there you go and that's just how solder wick works removing surface mount components can be done in a bunch of different ways one of the ways is if you have heated tongs you can do that you can put them on either side here or if you have a desoldering tool and a soldering iron handy you can just use them both at the same time so for example you just want to heat both sides up here so I'm going to heat this side and this side hopefully I can keep this in focus move this over a bit so I'll heat this side up and this side up and you can see that the component just comes right off just that easy now if you want to clean the pads up you'll notice that there's still get that off here, still you know, quite a bit of bally material on the pad there so what you want to do just put a bit of RA type flux on there and get your solder wick clean off the last little bit of solder wick here and just come in here like so get a bit of it on the wick the minute that you touch it it just basically cleans the pads right off you can see that those pads are perfectly flat now a little bit of RA flux on them still that can be cleaned up with whatever you want to clean it up with isopropyl alcohol, acetone lacquer thinner, whatever. And you're ready to put on your new component again. These parts here are a little bit easier. These are 1206 parts and they come off really easy. You can do this with one single soldering iron. And what you do is you just add a little bit of solder to one side like so. And then a little bit to the other like so. They go back and forth just like that and pick it off. There you go. Component missing. So now you can put your new component on there if you want. So basically just go back and forth a few times and then take it off. Again, you would clean this with some solder wick and it would become totally flat. You could set your new component down right flat. Removing surface mount components can also be done using a hot air tool. I'll give you an example right now. So I'll just turn this on. Pardon the noise. So this is the tool right here, a really small tip, see compared to my finger how big that is. It warms up pretty quick. So you just hold the component with a pair of tweezers like so. Just like that. Part right here. Stuck to the tweezers. Just hold on a second. There we go. Stuck to the tweezers. Probably the flux on the tweezers is doing that. So there you go. And there's the little surface mount component. And it's just that easy to replace that. And it's the same with larger ICs too. It's, you pretty much just heat the IC like this with a, a larger nozzle and this whole IC will just come right off. There's quite a bit of lead spacing on this thing, wow. Okay, let's desolder some point-to-point -point stuff using the solder pulled. So it's pretty effective using these things. I'm just going to angle this just a little bit better so I can 
to get this with that. I can try to get some better light on here. There we go. So, again, I better charge it here. And you can see that works pretty good. Takes a lot of the solder out of there. Now, in the previous video, I was talking about, you know, scoring the tip of your iron. A lot of people have a tendency to see how it's wrapped around here by heating this and pressing on this and unwrapping it. I'm guilty of that myself. And yeah, it does destroy tips. So resist the temptation if you're working on point to point wiring to unwrap things with a hot soldering tip. It's much better just to grab a, an actual clipper or something like that. Something like this here, Let's see if we can get this all in the shot. You can see that enough solder has been removed so that you can actually just twist this and unwind it. See that? So, much, much easier. And you don't destroy an expensive tip doing that. So, again, I'm guilty of it myself. So I'll just press that down to the side there. So now what we'll do is we'll take the Heiko and we'll come in here and desolder this with the Heiko. See how that works. And see how nicely that works. Almost no comparison. And we'll take this the smaller blue one here. We'll just clip this wire. Move this over like this so we can see the pins. So this is this smaller blue one here. Try this on some point-to-point -point stuff. And as you can see, not very much suction power, so I'll reload it again and try it again. You can see it is working. It's just a little bit slower. So if you were, you know, given the choice to choose between the two, definitely. And let's try some solder wick. So let's get something that doesn't have a whole lot of solder on it. Solder wick absorbs this stuff really quick and it just will use a huge chunk of solder wick trying to take solder off of something like this. So I'll add a little bit of RA flux to the wick. The wick here again. And get this down in here. So you have to press the soldering iron on top of the wick. And as you can see, you should be doing this in a well-ventilated area. You can see how much that just absorbed, right? You use large amounts of wick by doing it like this. And I'll use a little bit more. So you can see it did a nice job. Took all of the stuff off of there as well. Just get this a little bit better into the shot there. So you can see that did not a bad job. So all in all, on the point to point, it's much, much easier to, you know, get good results, right? Because you know you got you know, big areas and they're kind of isolated from things. So this is okay for point to point, definitely. The solder pult works well. And of course, you can definitely tell that this guy here is pretty much a winner in all situations. So there you have it. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this video involving all these soldering tools and tips and techniques. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be talking about vacuum tube electronics, solid state electronics. We'll be doing teardowns and modifications as well. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level, you might want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. So I'll put the link just below this video in the description, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the post. So just click on one of those links and it should bring you right there. If you go there, check out the community section. There's lots of people sharing their projects there as well. All right, until next time, take care.
Bye for now.